These fragrances here have absolutely brutal room filling projection. They're crazy strong. And so if you want to be the guy that makes a statement wherever you go with your scent and you want to smell great, you're going to want to check these out. Because remember, there's a trade-off with something like this. Sometimes you could get something that has incredible projection, super, super strong, but people may not like how that smells and therefore you're kind of uh, shooting yourself in the foot, so to speak. <laughs> you're not really getting the result that you might want. But these not only have great projection, great delivery, but they also are scents that have a lot of mass appeal, meaning your, your probability of, of getting complimented or just smelling good to people around you is incredibly high. And so that's something you always want to keep in mind when you're shopping for your next scent, whether you're focusing just on compliments or just on projection. You need to take the other side of the story into consideration as well and make sure you're getting something that people will be able to smell and people will like. Because remember, you could have something that smells amazing, but if nobody smells it on you, nobody's going to say anything to you. And again, you know, there's the opposite side of that story, which we already covered. And so I'll link these down below to discounters for you if you want to check some of these out for yourself. Um, all of these can be had for below retail cost, which is always a big bonus. Let's get things kicked off with Dior Sauvage Parfum. So when it comes down to it, you can put just about any. You can put the EDT, the EDP, very cool spray. Elixir is a little bit more challenging because yes, it has brutal projection. However, it's not as mass pleasing as the rest of the line. It would still work. It'll still get you compliments, I'm sure but not as many. Sauvage Parfum is a, a really nice one because it does take a few steps away from the peppery, uh, metallic, uh, over-the-top Sauvage DNA, and instead they focus quite a bit on sandalwood and olibanum along with that bergamot. So, you know, they're, they're adding some more woods, it's more smooth, a little bit more creamy, there's a little bit more of a sweetness to it and less of all of that peppery, sharp spiciness. But it still does maintain that Sauvage DNA and it still is a flanker of Sauvage and it still smells similar to it. But again, it just doesn't go to that extreme. However, just because they backed off on that doesn't mean that they backed off on the performance. This one is being delivered to you in a parfum concentration and it is crazy strong, just like all of the others. So don't worry about that. You know, parfums generally sit closer to the skin sometimes than EDPs. Not really too much the case here. It still projects a lot. And so if that is what you're looking for, then this is still going to do the job perfectly for you. Just maybe a little bit less predictable than some of the others out there, which you're more likely to smell on other dudes. I would say the parfum is gonna be a bit more under the radar. And because it's slightly more expensive than some of the others at retail, especially, that's gonna kind of draw people away. But when you can get these on discounters, it works out to be not all that far off from the others. It's a fantastic projector with great mass appeal. Uh, this next one is Tom Ford Ombre Leather. It is one of the most wearable leather scents in the game. And at least when we're talking leather fragrances that are actually focusing a lot on leather, you know, just because you might see leather in the note breakdown of, you know, some Hugo Boss scent or something, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily a leather scent. And it goes for all of the brands as well. You know, I would consider a leather scent to be something where the main note is leather. There's a lot of fragrances that use it and a lot of them are very mass pleasing because they're not using a ton of it. But when you get into certain leather scents that is using that note heavily, sometimes it can steer it away from the, the mass market type of smell because the type of leather that they're using is a little bit more animalic and rough and kind of textured in a way that people aren't used to smelling. And so sometimes that goes in the, the complete opposite direction, but not with ombre leather. So again, one of the most wearable, true leather scents because it's a very smooth leather. You get a little bit of amber and a little bit of jasmine thrown in alongside to give it um, a little bit of a, a sweet balance and then also a little bit of a fresh balance, right? But again, it's all about the note and the name. So yeah, if you're looking for something that is going to be a, a wearable, realistic leather scent with great projection, great performance all around, and something that people are really going to like the smell of on you, check out Ombre Leather. You know, with something like this, it's a little bit more expensive. Um, being that it's in the signature line, it's not as expensive as the private blend Tom Ford's, but again, it's still pricey. Now, 
You can choose some other things. Um, there are ombre leather clones out there like Afnon. Uh, what is it? It is Afnon. Oh man, hold on. I hate it when that happens. Afnon Rare Carbon. It was right there and I was trying to stall so I could remember the name on my own and I couldn't do it. Afnon Rare Carbon is a great clone if you have 40 bucks laying around and wanna get into the DNA instead of spending somewhere in the mid $100 range for the real deal. There's options out there for you, but this DNA works great. And yes, the clone has great projection as well. Now, this next one needs no introduction. We have YSLY Eau de Parfum. Uh, man, it is an absolute powerhouse. Has been since day one. You know, I think that was one of the things that propelled this to superstardom, so to speak, is that it really uh, brought performance to the table. And that's not so common, especially from these expensive designer brands, which might sound counterintuitive. Maybe people first getting into the hobby might think that if you spend more money on something, you get better performance out of it. And unfortunately, that's not how it works in a lot of instances. You know, there are a lot of scents out there from these big designer brands that might not perform good as, as some other scents that are half their price or, or something like that. So you have to be careful. You have to make sure you do research on what you're purchasing if you are after performance and projection. But this one does deliver. And so when you're spending 100 bucks for that, you hope that it does give you what you want. And again, this one delivered on that since day one. So that combined with the compliment factor, big time, really sent this one to the top. And it is a bestseller for men. You look pretty much anywhere, whether it be discounters, retailers, when you sort by best selling, this is usually on the first page, pretty high up towards the top. So that definitely is saying something. So if you want something that's going to get you noticed, that's going to smell very good, maybe has a little bit of a familiar smell, but in a good way, which really kind of helps with getting noticed and, and getting feedback, check out Yota Parfum. You know, I don't think it's to the point yet where it's completely oversaturated, like you might say with Sauvage or Blue de Chanel, but I think that only goes to a certain extent anyway, where your probability or your chances of wearing this one and getting compliments is still very high. And really, it's kind of the same with a lot of this other stuff too. Don't, don't get too stressed about that. Wear what you like, wear what you want, wear what has good performance for you, and chances are you're still gonna smell amazing to people around you. Even if they don't say it, they're thinking it. Wanted by Night comes in at around $64, $65 for 100 mil, so just cut, lop some of the bottom of this off, and that's about what it would look like, you know, like that. Zara Wanted by Night. 100 mil. This is the 150. Good luck finding these. There was a point where you could barely find the 100 mils. And so I don't know. It's uh, looking fascinating for this one to say the least. Retailers don't have it. Amazon doesn't have it. Zaro's official website sends you to those websites. Macy's, Ulta, um, Amazon, they send you directly there and all of those pages are dead. So if you want, if you want a Zara Wanted by Night, I would grab it while you can. Also, these are refillable, and so if you plan on purchasing, you know, aftermarket, which is not the right word, but from eBay secondhand, I guess, or Facebook groups, be aware of that. But this one's all about the cinnamon, the fruity notes, the tobacco. It's a fantastic one. You know, it didn't really quite captivate the market outside of the community as much as like the original and, and stuff like Invictus. However, within the community, this one was loved by many and still is. I mean, I still love this stuff. It's one of my favorites from the line. You know, this and the most wanted parfum are two fantastic ones, but the most wanted is a DNA that's probably going to be better suited for the mass market. With that being said, this is still a fantastic compliment polar and a great performer. Next up, we have Eros Flame. So you could put in the Eau de Parfum, you could put in the Parfum, which is one of my favorites. However, every time I wear Flame, every time I smell it, I love it more and more. This was a flanker that initially I didn't have much interest in at all. Uh, I don't know why, I just, I don't know. It didn't do a lot for me in the beginning. But again, the more I smell it, the more I love it because of that vanilla, the orange, some of the citrus in here. The lemon is pronounced. You really pick up on it. It is nice. And it's a very, very nice change of pace if you're someone like me who has smelled and worn the original Eros EDT for years. That was one of my first additions to my collection. And, you know, you're just, you're around that smell a lot. Other people are wearing it. You've spent a lot of time with it. 
And of course, the Parfum and the EDP are big improvements over the EDT, but it still is that DNA. And this one is just a, a more fruity, citrus forward take. It, it kind of backs off on some of the mint vanilla combination, which can be an apple, which can be very overbearing in those originals. Um, this one just adds an, an extra layer of a, a creaminess and a different type of peppery spiciness that really suits it well. Uh, combine that with the fact that it has great projection, great performance all the way around, and because it's Eros, people love it. Uh, this is one that you can get for a pretty reasonable price, more so than something like the Parfum. You know, I think it's maybe 60-ish, maybe 70, somewhere around in there, maybe even less, I don't know, but it's it's mid-range there, and it's a great purchase. And this next one is one that if you have deep pockets, it's worth picking up. If you want to Dive into niche. If you haven't gotten any for yourself yet, this would be a great starting point. And um, yeah, that's really all I have to say. Uh, Parfums de Marley Layton. Yeah, you guys know it, but uh, uh, you know this would be a great starting point. I started out with Mansara, and that's an even cheaper entry point into niche. This one, you know, is generally going for 180 if it's in stock. If not it's kind of getting to that point where retail is the only way. So be on the lookout for it. 180, 125 ml, it works out to be a pretty good price per mil. There are a lot of niche out there that go for 180, 190, $200 for 50 ml. So when you break it down that way, this is not as expensive as a lot of people make it out to be. All of the Zerzhoffs and the Killians and the Rojas go for double or triple this price per mil. So, you know, don't have too much of a sticker shock scenario here and immediately try to, to hate on it because it's, uh, you know, not that unreasonable. But nonetheless, it still is approaching $200 for a fragrance, which might sound crazy to people who are new to niche or the luxury market of, of fragrances or colognes or whatever, but uh, this is a good one to start out with because it is so mass pleasing. The apple, the cinnamon, the vanilla, the tonka bean is a great tried, tested, and proven DNA that works well for so many people and the performance on this one is fantastic. Next up we have Latafa Kamra, kind of switching over to some clone action here. This one kind of rose to fame for smelling like um, Killian's Angel's Share. And it does have some of that going on, but with its own twist. It's got dates, cinnamon, praline, vanilla, and tonka. So it doesn't have like a ton of a booziness like Angel Share does. It is in there a little bit, but not a ton. It, it's sweeter and more syrupy, I would say. You know, the, the praline, uh, all of that stuff is no joke. Those aren't imaginary notes. You take one smell of this and you're like, okay, I see what you're saying. This is about as sweet as you could possibly take it. You know, I would almost say this is kind of in the, the level of ultra male sweetness or something like that. I'm trying to think of things that are just so over the top. I mean, it's up there. It's, it, yeah, it might actually be there. Holy crap. It's been a while since I've smelled it. That went right in my nose. It's syrupy. It's strong. It is, yeah. If you like gourmands, if you like sweet scents, you like something that's over the top and completely crazy in terms of its projection and performance, this is it. It is a mid-30 to low $40 scent, and it gets the job done. If you want to make a statement, this is the one that's going to do it. Next up, we have Invictus Intense by Paco Rabanne, one of the discontinued flankers that you can still purchase, however, at discounters. So if you want this one, pick it up. It's got whiskey, amber, salt, you know, sea salt, black pepper, and then ambergris as well. Uh, there's some sort of floral, can't remember, I, or like an orange blossom, I think it is, uh, in the top as well, adding a little bit of freshness, but it still is very sweet. You know, when it comes down to it, in terms of Invictus, um, I like Aqua the best. I like the new Victory and Victory Elixir. I like those. Uh, but in terms of the other lineup, I'm not the biggest fan of the original, and I would take the Intense over the original. You know, there's, in terms of my personal, like, preference and scent, um, when it comes to all of them, mass appeal-wise and performance-wise, they all do a great job, so I'm not hating. But Invictus Intense is one that I do really enjoy the smell of. I like wearing it. I mean, it's just one that I prefer a little bit more. 
And it's because the whiskey in here and the amber kind of going along with that whiskey, which of course is a pretty common combination. And the amber, ambergris within here is very common within the Invictus line. So they're just combining a few things that work really well together. And it just gives this Invictus DNA a little bit more of a kind of a, a twist, you know, it gives it just something a little bit more spicy, you know, just to make it a little bit more interesting. It's got great projection, great mass appeal. This next one is perfect for a summer evening or really any evening in general, but it's Lebo Le Parfum. Now this one's all about the coconut, the pineapple, the tonka bean, another one that's very sweet, you know, again, no surprise here. Um, these types of things usually work the best. You know, the sweetness really also gives it a lot of push, a lot of projection, and that that, that sweetness in general has a way of, of just cutting through the air and cutting through other smells in the air more than, you know, freshies and stuff. That's just kind of how it works a lot of the time. And so because of the coconut and the pineapple in this, it, it gives off kind of a summer smell, as you would imagine, almost like a pina colada vibe, although it doesn't have any boozy notes in here and it, you know, has its own thing going on. But it's kind of the impression that you might get when thinking about this, just, you know, summer evening, having a good time with friends out and about, you know, this is kind of what it's all about right here. It has that sweet kind of young, playful smell that a lot of guys are going to gravitate towards. And because of all of that, the performance is great. The projection is great. It's a fantastic one to pick up. Ferragamo Oud, winding down to the end. This is a good $60 cent or so. A little bit more expensive than the other Ferragamos, but well worth it. One of my favorites from the brand. It's got leather, oud, tobacco, rum, and benzoin. The note breakdown to me is absolute perfection. Like when I see all of those notes together, I purchase it without even thinking twice. And that's what I did with this. And it came in and sure enough, ended up loving it. A lot of times when you take and, and look at the big picture, a lot of Ferragamo scents are going to be more catered to the younger audience. At least all of their big popular mainstream designer releases, the Ferragamo Womos and, and things like that, uh, F Black, um, all of that stuff, right? But this one is for the guys who want something more mature, more refined, and more elegant. You know, this has more of an evening, mysterious, kind of grown-up smell to it. If you're looking for a great boozy tobacco scent with great projection for fall and winter, this is it. People love it. We'll finish things off with Spice Bomb Night Vision Eau de Parfum. So when it comes to the Spice Bombs, the Night Visions aren't my favorite in terms of just smell. You know, I would take Extreme and I would take Infrared, especially the new Infrared EDP over these. However, the projection on this one especially is fantastic and this DNA is very mass pleasing. So just throwing it in because it fits the video. It might not fit my criteria of what I like a lot, you know, but it, it works well. Pistachio, apple, cardamom, pepper. There's a ton of other notes as well, like a whole bunch of them, but that gives you a general idea. You know, it, it kind of has a familiar type of smell. People have kind of said Invictus. People have kind of said Azaro wanted. They've said all of these things. And it, it, again, it's because it is familiar. It kind of smells like a little bit of everything. And that's why it works so well in the mass appeal department. And the performance is a huge plus. Alrighty, guys, that's going to do it for me. Uh, we got some brutal performance crushing, uh, super strong projectors here for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed these picks. Uh, I'll link them all down below for you. And we're kind of heading into the time here where deals are going to be dropping like crazy on these discounters, all of the sales for the holiday time and all of these rare, hard to find stuff. The restocks are coming up now. So get on my mailing list and texting list to be the first to know about all of that. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.